Hey everybody, this is gonna be a bit more of a low-key video. I've done an enormous amount of work for Final Cut Pro 11 videos, so I need to tone things back a bit, but I did wanna let you know, all of my plugins on my store are 35% off for Black Friday, which is super exciting. You'll just need to use code black35 to get that discount. And that also includes my Apple Motion course. This video is just gonna be kind of a quick demo of all of the different stuff you can do with my plugins. That way you can make a better purchasing decision and decide which ones are best for you. So the first plugin on this list is ProZooms. It's very simple to use. You can either find it up here inside of your titles or you can find it down here in your effects. To apply pro zooms, I'll just go ahead and click and drag a title down on the timeline. Let me shorten that up. So now if I push play, you can see how it's auto zooming in. It's got a lot of great easing and it auto zooms out. Not only that, but we can click and drag these on-screen controls to decide where we want to zoom in on. So I could go ahead and zoom in here closer onto this building and pushing play, we can see how that zoom takes place. Additionally, there's a whole bunch of options for stuff like sharpening over here on the right, so you can add in more sharpening in case you're working with low quality footage. But not only is there this basic pro zooms, but there's also the pro burns effect. So if you need a nice slow zoom all the way across this entire title, you can do just that. And why is this better than the built-in Ken Burns effect inside of Final Cut Pro? We can also set the duration. So right now we're a little over seven and a half seconds. Let's say that I only want to zoom in over the first three seconds. I'll just set this to 50%. And so now the zoom will take place and then it will come to a stop and just sit there for the remainder of the title. The next plugin that you might wanna check out if you edit a lot of vertical videos inside of Final Cut Pro is my Pro Vertical plugin. Now, as of today, I have just released a small update and so I'll showcase some of those new features to you as well as some of the existing ones. Pro Vertical can be found over in your titles and we have a whole bunch of options up here. We got backgrounds, we've got guides, shapes, titles, and zooms. But I think the most popular feature with my pro vertical effect is these overlays. So I'll go ahead and drag this down on the timeline and you can see how it is showcasing all of the different buttons that you might see in your UI so that you can clearly add in text without it getting obstructed by the like button or something like that. But additionally, we can come on over here to the right side and change it between all of these different websites. So if I need Instagram Reels, I can do that. If I need Facebook Reels, I can do that. And as part of the small update I've added today, you can actually select all. So now all of the various UIs will be enabled at the same time, which can give you a good idea if any element is being obstructed on one website or another. So not only does Pro Vertical come with a whole bunch of titles and stuff like arrows that we can drop in on the screen, but it also comes with a ton of effects and transitions. And the one I wanna highlight really quick is the transitions because I've just added these new static transitions with this latest update. To get access, we'll just go on over to our transitions and you can see FCB's Pro Vertical. The brand new transitions can be found under static and I'll just apply those under my clips. And if we push play, we can see how that static is really adding to our shot. And we have actually 10 variations of static that we can apply. And then on top of that, we can choose if we want to distort it. So I'll go ahead and disable that and you'll notice that it's no longer distorting the footage. We can adjust the saturation and the values and that'll just give us a different look with that static. The next plugin is one of the very first plugins I ever created for the channel and that is the simple clone stamp tool. You can just find it under the FCB's clone stamp effect and I can apply this onto my clip. Let's say I want to remove this boat. Well, to use the clone stamp tool, we'll just use the built-in shape mask tool. If we go to the top right, we can go ahead and get our shape mask settings and select add shape mask. And I'll just create a rough mask right around this boat here because we want to remove it. From there, I'm gonna go up to the tracker settings and we'll click this down arrow and change the behavior from pin to tracker over to offset from tracker. And then we can go ahead and select analyze and just see what happens. That did a pretty solid job, although it is adjusting the scale of our shape a little strangely. So let's go ahead and just disable scale and then go into the shape settings and shrink that back down. Now that we have that set, we can push done. And this is where the magic of the clone stamp tool happens. I can go ahead and just use this on-screen control and drag left or right until we get a cleaner portion of the video. 
That's looking pretty good. Maybe I wanna adjust that shape mask a little bit, add a little bit more feathering to it. And now if we push play, we've just removed the boat. My plugin Pro Shapes is for all of you motion graphics creators in Final Cut Pro. Pro Shapes comes with a whole bunch of different shapes you can easily add onto your timeline. Now you might be asking yourself, why don't I just use the built-in shapes tool inside of Final Cut Pro? Well, with the Pro Shapes tool, it actually gives you really handy on-screen controls. So for example, I'll just add in the basic rectangle shape. And you'll immediately notice that now I have on-screen controls so I can shrink the size of it. I can move it around super easily and we can even rotate it if I grab the corner. There's a whole bunch of controls over here on the side like I can adjust the outline if I want to. We could disable the fill. So there is a lot of flexibility here. But what's also cool with Pro Shapes is all of these various shapes also come with a different outline style. So if you want it to look more like chalk, go ahead and apply the chalk filter. And so now it looks like a chalk line drawing on this rectangle. So that is just the rectangle, but let's take a look at a more complex shape like this octagon. And now I can adjust each control point as needed. And there's a basic line we can go ahead and drag in. Several different backgrounds you can try out up here, which are super fun. But then on top of that, I've also added in a bunch of additional animations. So let's go ahead and apply a star shape down on the timeline. And in our effects, we can locate FCB's pro shapes. So not only can I apply stuff like this long shadow effect, which is super cool, but we can also go in and add stuff like this hover effect. So I'll push play and now that is floating in place. Additionally, there's this great overshoot animation, so I'll play that and it pops in just like so. We have this spin animation, so it slowly spins and we can go into the animation controls and adjust everything. Let's go ahead and ramp that way up. And so you can see how we can create some really dynamic looking animations by using Pro Shapes. The next plugin on this list is my picture in picture plugin. Now you might be asking yourself, why do I need a picture in picture plugin? Final Cut Pro 11 comes with it. Well, firstly, if you're not in Final Cut Pro 11, you have access to a picture-in-picture -picture plugin. But secondly, there's actually a whole lot of different effects that come with my picture-in-picture -picture plugin, which you can apply to the built-in Final Cut Pro effect. So, for example, I'll just go ahead and apply my picture-in-picture -picture onto this shot. We can adjust it into the correct position here. That's looking pretty good to me. The first thing that comes with my picture-in-picture -picture plugin is the fact that we can change this shape. So right now you'll immediately notice it's a perfect circle. It's much harder to get that perfect circle shape with the built-in Final Cut Pro picture-in-picture -picture effect. But additionally, we can change it over to a square or we can change it to a rectangle or a vertical rectangle. We could go to an octagon. And if you're feeling really crazy, you can actually do a custom shape. So for example, I brought in this plus sign from Pro Shapes and made it really crazy. And let's go ahead and apply this as the picture in picture effect, apply a clip. So now our picture in picture is designed around this crazy shape, which we've just created. So there's a lot of power there. You can really bring your branding into your picture in picture effects for your videos. But not only that, this comes with a nice long shadow effect that we can apply. Or if you want more of an Ali Abdal style of picture in picture, we can apply the border glow effect. And you'll see that that's creating a really interesting look around our subject. So I'll actually go to the first picture in picture and just disable the outline. And then on the border glow, we can have stuff like the width, the offset. We could change the gradient colors if we want to. We could add more outer glow, inner glow, all sorts of stuff. So you can get a really interesting look. Now the last plugin I wanna showcase is possibly my most underrated plugin. It's called Motion Tools, which I know makes a lot of people think that that's a bunch of animation tools for Final Cut Pro. And while that is true in some instances, it's not true in all of them. So what Motion Tools does is it goes into Apple Motion, which has over a hundred different tools and effects that aren't over in Final Cut Pro, and I've just brought them into Final Cut Pro. This particular plugin has such a massive list, it's gonna be extremely difficult for me to cover all of it inside of this video, but I'll show you some of my absolute favorite effects that it comes with. The first effect on this list is the compound blur effect. So you can find that over here inside of the motion tools, compound blur, and I'll apply it to my text. At first, it's gonna look like nothing's really happening, we have to tell it what to blur. So right now, if we take a look at the drop zone, it has no source. Let's go ahead and select a source. And I'm going to use this bump map effect, which I created again using motion tools because motion tools comes with a clouds generator. And this is what it looks like by itself. And then from there, we'll drag up the amount 
And if we push play, you can see how our text looks so much more interesting. This next effect is super cool because it works amazing with the new magnetic mask tool. Let's go on over to our effects and look up wide time, which will be found in motion tools. And I'm going to apply it onto the shot of the person walking. I've gone ahead and already cut him out. And so if we push play, you can start to see it's kind of adding some nice motion blur there at the bottom. But if I drag the duration up, you can see how that's really changing the shot. So now pushing play, you can see how he looks really crazy while the whole background looks completely fine. The next effect is another really great one that works with the magnetic mask. All I need to do is apply the stroke filter. Now I can adjust the offset, bring up the width, change the color. It's really up to you. And just like that, we have a great looking outline. The next effect on this is the bump map filter. I'll again bring these bump map clouds into our shot. And with our bump map effect selected, I'm going to select those bump map clouds and push apply. So already you can start to see how he's kind of rippling. But if we drag the amount up quite a bit, you can see how there's almost this melting effect going on over him, which is really, really cool. We could change the direction of this if we wanted to. So hopefully you can kind of get an idea of what the bump map effect is capable of. Another super fun effect are these replicators. I'll go ahead and apply the wave replicator onto our guy and I'm gonna change the color mode over to original. And now if I go ahead and drag these out, we can just have a whole line of the same guy all walking in place. You can use that for all sorts of stuff. I use it all the time for logo animations, but another great way is to use it with the magnetic mask. So that was a look at all of my Final Cut Pro plugins, but there's one other big thing I wanna talk about, and that is my Apple Motion Masterclass, which is also on sale for Black Friday. Why should you learn Apple Motion? Well, Every single effect that you saw in this video was created using Apple Motion. All of the plugins I've created are in motion and they are published over to Final Cut Pro. There's no programming involved. It's just pure clicking and dragging and using the buttons that are in the software to make these powerful plugins. You can build dynamic graphics, you can build your own plugins. Really the sky is the limit when it comes to Apple Motion. So you're gonna be creating all the different files you've seen here on the screen. I'm hanging out in the exclusive Discord channel answering all the Apple Motion questions I can. There's exclusive live streams. There's really just so much happening over in the Apple Motion Masterclass. Don't miss this amazing opportunity to get it for 35 percent off using the code linked down below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this ridiculously long video and I'm looking forward to hanging out with you in the next one.